Hey everyone, my name is Jason Dinger. I'm a board game designer. I'm uh, working with publishers such as Spillworks and Stronghold. And in this series, I'm hoping to be able to teach the game designers how to use Vassal to create modules so they can play test their games. You can even build final modules that you can play full finished versions of your game online with. Vassal is a very powerful, simple engine to use. There's a couple concepts you have to understand early on. I'll go through that as I go through the video series. But as we get through it, you'll you'll see it. Uh, it's a very powerful, very very good system to use. So one thing I want to say: bear in mind that the game that I'm going to be showing is a very simple game that I've uh, I've created in about 15 minutes just for this. Uh, it's just gameplay thrown together. The art, something very simple that I threw together. I don't want you to think that's what it has to look like in Vassal. You see here, I've got Navajo Wars, published by GMT, designed by Joel Toppin. You see it has the, the beautiful artwork on the board and the tokens that the actual game has. Your module is going to look as good as you make it look. It, it's, I, I don't want you to see the simple module that I'm going to make and let that color your opinion of Vassal as a gameplay engine, as a, as a playtest engine. So you can see here the, the, the colors, the art, it's, it's going to look as good as you make it. So closing that down, now we're going to go in uh, right here in Valsa. You can see I have the, the different uh, modules I've worked on in the past. We're going to go right here to start a new module. And that's going to open up two different windows. At the top, you'll see this long window. That's what you'll use when you're launching the games. That's where the game's actually played. It's where you'll connect to the server. Uh, you can save games there so that you can go back if you're, uh, if you're play testing and for some reason you have to break away from the game. You can save the game, come back, you, you, all the players have the same game saved. They load that file, come back, pick up where you left off. At the bottom, though, you'll see the Vassal module editor. This is the heart and soul of Vassal. This is where all of the work is going to be done. And inside here, if anything that you'll see here, the, the folders, the files, think of it. Any, any OS like Mac, Windows, the different flavors of Linux, you're familiar with your files and your, the folders, the subfolders are stored in. That's how the Vassal module editor is laid out. So you've got different folders in here, such as folders for maps, folders for different types of, uh, of properties that can go to it, the main folder at the top for the module itself, and then below it, the different subfolders and the files inside. So anytime you right click on an object or a file or a folder there in Vassal, you'll be able to get a menu. You can add things, delete, cut, copy, paste, go to the properties. At the top here, you can see we have properties at the top. And all the way down, these are all things we can add to our module that we're going to get into in later videos in this series. You can also double click onto any object to get their properties. So in this case, we did that. We bring it up. We've got the game name. We're going to go ahead and just name that demo game, just something generic. Below that, we've got the, the version number, 1.0, and then description. You can just put in whatever you want. I'm just going to put, you know, how to demo. Once we click OK, and that closes, you'll see we've got the save icon up here to the top left of that window. We could save it now, but because we don't have a map board assigned to our main map, it's going to fuss. I do want to go ahead and show you that if you drop this down, there's a folder for the map board, but there's no board inside of that. You need that before you save. If I save, it's going to throw an error. You can see here it's complaining. We can ignore it and save it anyway. You don't need to do that. I just wanted to show you this here because if you forget later on you're, you're working in a module and you go to do that, this pops up. I don't want to throw you off. I want you to be aware. You can go ahead and save. We're going to cancel. We're going to right-click on that, that folder there for the main board. And we're going to go, uh, or excuse me, double click. And we're going to go there, and we're going to go ahead and just change a few things here. We're going to change the name, just change the main, you know main game board. Most of this we're going to leave alone. You'll use some of those settings for player boards and other different boards you may have in the game. But for the most part right here, we're only going to worry about this border thickness. That's for objects, your components, your cards, things like that, and the color outline. I like a red just because of the color I typically use in my prototypes. The red shows up pretty good. Uh, the rest of this we're going to leave default. We're not going to worry about any of that. Uh, there is a, a spot where you could show and hide boards. We're not going to do that. We're just going to click OK. Here we're going to right click. When we get that menu, we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to add a board. This is going to bring up another window. And so the properties here, we have the name. I'm just going to name it, you know, main board. You've got the size and pixels and the color. If you didn't have graphics and you just wanted to put, uh, you know, a, a generic color there and a, a size, you could do that. 
Uh, we're not going to bother any of that there. I've got some simple graphics I've made for this board. So we're going to select here to go pick the image. And you can see here I've got uh, this, this graphic here. We're going to go ahead and add it. Once that's done, we're going to close that out. We're going to save it. Now we, we go to the folder where it's going to be. I'm just going to browse down. I keep uh, all my Vassal modules here. And I've got a demo folder. We're going to name it demo dot v m o d v mod a v mod file is the the module file vassal module v mod that's important because otherwise vassal won't know what to do with it won't know how to open it so once that's done you can see it's added here to the the my vassal menu i can go and and launch the game now but i'm not going to do that because there's this this funky little thing about vassal as good as it is it's one thing when you add graphics to board specifically they're compressed into the module when you first open the module. So if I launch a game now, even though it's saved, those graphics aren't compressed in. They're saved. A, a fast little VMOD file is basically a zip file. So what I have to do, you know, once it's saved, we're going to go ahead and close it out. Then we're going to reopen it. When we reopen it, you're going to notice on the top left of the screen, you're going to see a progress bar. That's going to show that the graphics are being compressed in, that board graphics. It's only going to happen once, just the first time that I, I launch it after adding it. So now it's popped up. If I go up to the top and I load a new game, you're going to see that my board is there. It's going to be out of size. I know that. I do everything at 300 dpi. That's the, the size, the resolution I use for printing, and so I keep it for Vassal. So it's going to be a little big on the screen. I keep it that way because I don't know the size of your screen, you know, compared to my screen. So I know if it's big enough, you'll be okay. I just have to give you the ability to shrink it or enlarge it how you need. What you see here, this, this section uh, in the gray is actually just a standard Magic the Gathering size card. So way too big on the screen. So what we're going to do, we're going to add zoom capability. Again, talking about the properties and the, the values. So we're going to go to that, that map. We're going to right-click on it. All right, we're going to scroll down to just above the, the middle of the options there, add zoom capability. When I click on this, it's going to bring up a window. Uh, most of the defaults we're going to leave alone, but we're going to look at the side. It's got these the, the default sizes, all right? We're going to keep the, the 1.0, it has the initial size. That's just the size that the file is. 1.6, we're going to remove. Anything greater than 1.0, it's zooming in too much. It's going to pixelate and make it look ugly. You, you don't want that. The other ones below, they're probably fine, but... I'm simple. I like to just use the quarters, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. I'm going to add all those in. When I'm done, I'm going to go to the, the 0 0.5, and I'm going to set it as the initial size. The options down at the bottom, you'll see, uh, those we're going to leave alone. Uh, those are just things where you could change what the menu is and how it looks when you, when you drop down. We're going to save that. We're going to go ahead and launch it now. We don't have to close out. We didn't add graphics. And now you'll see it's 50% of the size. It's still a little bigger than we want, but we can drop this down, and I can cycle through the different sizes that I've set. You know, So 0.25 is still a little bit too small. So it gives me a couple other options. One is going to be fit to width. If I had a very long board, I might do that. In this case, I don't. My board's a little shorter, so that, you know, that doesn't quite work. Still, it would have to scroll down. I don't have to do that. So I'm going to go with a board this size. I'm going to go fit to height. And you can see it fits to the, the window's height. It's going to fit in there a lot nicer. The top area where you would see uh, the log as you take place, it's a little too big. So I'm going to, I'm going to in, you know, enlarge the actual map area. You see the map stays the same. So I can drop down and just pick fit height, fit height again. That's a good size. I like that. We'll go ahead and close it out since we know that that's what we wanted. That wraps up this intro video. Thank you for watching along. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.